You'd think that as a company, Mini would be a bit of a one-trick pony, but it's always finding new niches, and it thinks it's got one with this, the Roadster. It's like a convertible, but it has just one and two seats. And one of the benefits of only having two seats is that you have a boot you can actually use. There's twice the space in there as you get on the normal Mini convertible, so it's far more useful for carrying luggage. And oh no, look, I've picked, picked up a long item. Will I be able to fit it in lengthways? It doesn't appear that I can, but if you bear with me, you can because there's a handy ski hatch. And the lack of rear seats means there's also some storage space behind the front ones where you can put more items. There we go. Apart from those non-existent rear seats, the rest of the cabin is the usual mini fare, with the cutesy design that leaves you in no doubt of the maker car you're sitting in. Don't worry if you're a little bit on the large side, because you'll still be able to fit into this the miniest of minis, because there's plenty of adjustment in the driving position, and the seat goes back a long way, and headroom, well look at that, it's so generous, there's literally miles of headroom. Yeah, it's not very funny, is it? It's, it's also good with the roof up as well. Equipment's impressive too. There's a vast array of airbags in here. You've also got electronic anti-skid control to prevent an accident in the first place. And there's Bluetooth for your mobile phone. There's USB for your MP3 player. There's air conditioning for your body and parking sensors for your bumpers. And they're all standard. You can get the Mini Roadster with either petrol or diesel power. However, the best engine, the one that suits it the most, is the one in this car. It's the Cooper S's 1.6 litre turbo petrol because it will do 0 to 60 in just seven seconds. However, it's not just the punchy power delivery I like about this car or the fact that it's got plenty of performance. It's the way that when you press this sport button down here, a valve opens up in the exhaust, which makes the car emit popping and banging sounds whenever you decelerate. Have a listen to this. <laughs> I don't know why that's so much fun, it just, it just is. The Mini Roadster is about 10% stiffer than the normal convertible because it's been fitted with some extra bracing. And one advantage of this is that when you go over a bump in the road, the body doesn't flex as much. The main advantage is that this, plus the fact that you've got some stiffer suspension, means that the handling is even better. So you've got really darty steering, there's no body roll at all around corners, you've got plenty of grip, and the good news is that you've also got some pretty strong brakes. You probably gathered this car is pretty good fun to drive. However, it's not perfect, it does of course have some downsides. And as with all minis, some people may find the suspension is just too firm. And then there's the fact that when you put your foot down and accelerate hard, the steering wheel wiggles about in your hand as the power goes through the front wheels. Now that's not a problem you have at all with the rear wheel drive Mazda MX-5. Another problem you don't have with that car that you do with this is the fact that it can tram line quite badly, so it follows ruts in the road and you can almost feel that rather than you driving the car, the car's actually driving you, which is a bit disconcerting at times. So too is the lack of rear visibility. I mean, they're not great on roasters anyway, but the wind deflector on this car gets right in your way. And it's not as if it's doing a good job anyway, because you do get blown about quite a bit in this car, even with the windows up. Obviously, you can put the roof up, which can be done incidentally at speeds of up to 20 miles an hour. And as you can see, it doesn't take very long to fold into place. But then that highlights Another problem. Now, can you guess what it is? Yeah, you actually have to close the last part of the roof yourself and then do up the windows, which is a massive inconvenience. And then with the roof up, you know, it is another problem. The fact that when you're going at speed, it's not particularly well insulated, so it's still quite noisy inside the car. So you look down to turn up the stereo to drown out the din and realise that the centre console is just a mess of buttons that are just too fiddly to operate while you're driving. Finally, there's the fact that this car is, dare I say it, a little bit girly. In fact, you're probably wondering why Rebecca didn't review this. And you know what? So am I. But hey, if you want a road step, you want a roadster, don't you? And this one is actually pretty good value for money. Being a Mini, shouldn't depreciate too badly at all. And if you go for the Cooper S model, it offers you plenty of bang for your buck. Or should that be pop 
I'm bang for your buck.